Well, there is one kind of trade already going on between Louisiana and our friends across the Pacific, the trade of information. Recently, an LSU Ag Center economist joined other ag researchers on a trip to New Zealand and Australia to learn about the beef cattle and dairy industries there, and what Dr. Ross Pruitt brought back could benefit ranchers across the state. The terrain may not look familiar to Louisiana ranchers, but the cattle should. These are Brahmin-influenced cattle in northeastern Queensland, Australia. LSU Ag Center economist Ross Pruitt took these photos and videos. As an economist, he focuses on the numbers, the slaughter weight, the cost per pound, or kilo in this case, and prices. But Dr. Pruitt knows that inputs are a major factor in determining a rancher's profitability. And at least at two of the ranches he visited in Australia, the owners did not spend money on some inputs that cost Louisiana ranchers a lot of money. They didn't tend to use a, a lot of fertilizer and very rarely, at least with the two individuals I met with, use of herbicides to help control weed was almost non-existent. If you can maintain a stocking rate, you eliminate weed problems and you keep a good ground cover, which holds moisture. For rancher Greg Benny, keeping that moisture is important in what Australians call the dry. To keep nutrients in the soil, ranchers like Benny and fellow Queensland rancher Peter McLucas use these little flowering plants called pinto peanuts, a legume. One of the benefits about legumes is that they place nitrogen into the soil naturally. And at least in Louisiana, one of our limiting nutrients is often nitrogen. And so by using those legumes, they don't necessarily have to use the fertilizer um, side of things like what we do here in the States. That's not the only place these Australian ranchers save money. Not many people vaccinate. Excellent. Okay. The vaccine is not very user friendly and it's quite expensive and you and it's not 100% effective. It's not 100 effective. In New Zealand, the dairy industry is quite effective as you can tell by this line of cattle. According to Pruitt, this dairy owned by the native Mori in Rotorua milks about 900 cows in a carousel designed to hold 50 to 60 cattle at a time and operated by only five people. You know, interestingly enough, with some of the farms, they weren't milking every 12 hours. They'd gone to an 18 hour um, rotation, which was interesting. That approach coupled with forage management keeps production costs down, according to Oregon native Marv Pangborn, who now owns two dairies in New Zealand. Our cost of production, because it's pasture based, uh, generally speaking, is lower, uh, at least what we saw in the United States two years ago, was lower than the, than the U.S. guys. Forage is the key and to things, and if you manage that forage, then everything else kind of falls into place. Because, you know, cattle producers are forage or grass farmers first, who happen to be raising cattle. To give you an idea of just how important agriculture is to New Zealand, according to government statistics, agricultural products make up 63% of New Zealand's exports. We'll share a little side story about Dr. Pruitt's trip later on after the bottom line.